Welcome back to our photographycourse.net YouTube channel. I'm Kevin LJ and I'm going to talk to you today about using the shutter speed on your camera to help control the exposure when you're using manual mode. <laughs> If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please click that button below and click on the bell icon so you can stay up to date when we release new videos. So the shutter speed in your camera is another control that influences your exposure setting. The shutter is a blind in between the lens and the sensor and the shutter speed controls how long this stays open each time you push the shutter release button. In my old camera I can demonstrate to you how it works because I can open the back of the camera and you can see the shutter right there in the back and by setting it I can control the shutter by the shutter release button and you'll see it open and close and so that length of time is pretty short that is at the moment set to one eighth of a second if I switch it over to half a second it'll be a little bit easier to see the shutter open and close like that and then at faster speeds you won't even hardly be able to notice that it's changing this is up to a thousandth of a second now So that gives you an idea of how the shutter works and the time difference between the slower setting I showed you there and the fastest setting. You can hardly see the shutter moving when it's at a thousandth of a second. Our modern cameras can go up to an eight thousandth of a second, some even faster. So this high speed allows only a very small amount of light to come into the camera. So in very bright situations, the high speed is really helpful. If you're taking photos when there's not so much light, you'll need to use a slower shutter speed to allow more light to enter. And of course, you need to balance the shutter speed and the aperture together to allow the right amount of light to affect the sensor. Shutter speed also affects movement. So if you've got a subject that's moving, if you've got especially a subject that's moving across the camera plane, and you're using a slow shutter speed, your subject may appear blurred in the photograph. This is important to be aware of because if you want your subject to be sharp, you need to use a faster shutter speed. Sometimes you might want your subject to blur because this can convey a sense of motion in your photos and this is a great tool to use at times. I'm sure you've all seen lovely photos of waterfalls where the water appears silky and smooth. This is achieved using a very slow shutter speed. And there's other times where you might have seen photos of water that appears frozen in mid-air. This is achieved using a very fast shutter speed. There is a problem that can be encountered using a very slow shutter speed when you are hand holding a camera and that is camera shake. So if you are holding your camera and it moves even slightly when you're taking the photo, sometimes it can be just a little bit of pressure and this can mean that your whole photo will be blurred. So you need to be careful with this and not to use too slow of a shutter speed. If you are using a slow shutter speed, put your camera on a firm surface, preferably a tripod. This way the camera won't move when you're taking a photograph. Shutter speeds are measured in fractions of seconds and seconds and there's also a B setting. The B setting is kind of a manual control of the shutter speed. So long as you've got the shutter release button pressed down, the shutter will stay open. Shutter speeds are typically 1 1 25th of a second, 1 2 50th, 1 500th, and that sort of a range is a standard sort of a shutter speed. At times when it's very bright, you might need to go faster than that, or at times where you want to freeze the movement in a picture. When you're working in situations where there's not much light, so inside or in a cave or at night, you'll need to use a slower shutter speed so that enough light can come in and affect the sensor. And each of these settings are measured in increments of one stop. So between 1 125th of a second and 1 250th of a second, 
you're halving the amount of time and therefore the amount of light that enters the camera. And each full stop increment can be balanced when you're using your aperture setting and your ISO as well. So these are good to remember, they're good to have in mind. And the same with your aperture settings that I mentioned in the last video. It might seem a little bit complicated at first, but stick with it and it'll become second nature. You'll use them subconsciously before you know it. As long as you commit to it and as you keep practicing, it's not really so difficult. Many people think using auto exposure mode is much quicker and much more convenient. And it is because you don't really have to practice it. But doing the easy thing is not always the best and certainly not the most creative. So if you stick to using manual mode, if you learn the shutter speeds and how to control them and balance them with your aperture settings, you're well on the way to being a more creative photographer. So to learn more about this process, please check out our articles on photographycourse.net and don't forget to tune in and watch the next video in this series.